please hit the notification bell and also hit the like button. This helps in our ratings with the videos and we appreciate it. And be sure to hit the subscribe button. Thank you. Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Grumman Pilot's YouTube channel. And today we're going to talk about moving your battery aft. So here it is. But you have to ask, why are you moving the battery? Well, the simple answer is we're trying to maintain the airplane in a CG envelope. There's a certain range it can be. And if the battery and a bigger engine is up there, like are you trying to put a big engine in a Tiger, like a six-cylinder? Or are you just putting a bigger engine in a two-place? It's all for the CG envelope of the aircraft. Now, it's easy enough to do. First thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the battery, the bracket, all from the front of the airplane. We're going to run a new negative cable, star washing it to the uh, engine mount. We're going to master relay is going to get moved. Then we're going to mount the battery aft on the bulkhead. We're going to measure the stiffener in situ so it sits properly in the airplane. Put in the relay plate and then finally we'll work that out with a weight and balance recalculation for the aircraft. So to kick the ball rolling down the road, the first thing we're going to do is take the battery off of the firewall. Now, it helps if you take the battery out of the battery tray, take the shield off, take the battery out, the battery box out, and then what you're left with is where the four holes go through the firewall. Those are A and 3 bolts. They go through honeycomb bobbins and they secure that battery box tray to the firewall. We're going to remove all of that so that it looks like this. Now that we have these holes in the firewall, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to fill the top two and the bottom inboard with an A and 3, a large area washer, and a nut on the inside so that we have no way for fire to come through the firewall. And in the lower outboard hole, first thing we're going to do is cut a one inch circle of insulation around that hole from the inside of the firewall. Then we're going to increase the size of the hole to be for your new battery cable and the shield to prevent the battery box from fretting against the honeycomb. And be sure to take the honeycomb bobbin out of that bottom outboard hole before you drill it. Don't ask me how I know that. And here's just a real quick look at some of the hardware we'll be using. This is not an all-inclusive list and there will be more needed, trust me. Okay, I was a little quick there on the hardware. But let's talk about the metal pieces that we're going to have. And there are five of them that we're going to be using to move the battery to the back. There's the stiffener piece that goes along the tunnel. And then we have this piece here for the master relay, which we're going to mount to the stiffener. And that gives us our battery isolation in the back of the airplane within two feet of the battery as part of 4313B. Now some of the other pieces. On the left right here, we have a big piece of honeycomb, which is going to support the battery holding tray we have took off the front of the airplane and holding in the back. And next to it is a stiffener that we're going to use to structure all of this after we all get it primer coated and get it ready for mounting in the airplane. And then we have this little piece of angle aluminum that we're going to use to attach to our stiffener and it's also going to mount it to the bottom of the airplane. Give us a good structure for the battery in the back. And it's all going to go on this bulkhead where the turtle deck ends and where the tail cone starts. And this is where we're going to be mounting all these pieces for the battery relocation. Now step number two in this is making a new battery cable. And we're going to run that between the engine and the lower motor mount and we're going to use a new star washer to make a good contact and you're going to torque that to 200 inch pounds and that's where it's going to get mounted and that's going to be the grounding and we're going to let the airframe carry that ground all the way for us. Now we're going to move the master relay. We're going to take out the two A and 3 bolts that hold to the firewall. We're going to fill those again with the A and 3 hardware and the AN 973 large area washers leaving the honeycomb bobbins in place we're going to remove the bus bar between the master relay and the starter and then we're going to pull the master relay energizer line and the dome light wire through the firewall after removing the terminal. Now for mounting the ba battery bracket in the back there are five pieces that we're going to need. We're going to need the honeycomb panel, we're going to need the stiffener, we're going to need the lightning hole spacer that gives us the right hardware to use then we're going to need our master relay mounting pad and our large aluminum for attaching to the honeycomb to the fuselage bottom. These are all going to get primed and attached to the back of the airplane. Now for this next bit, we're going to want to remove the interior so we have access to the back bulkhead. We're going to place the honeycomb piece on the bulkhead with the center approximately 7 and 3 quarter inches from the fuselage side on the lower lightning stretcher just above the baggage floor. 
We're going to match drill that so it matches your airplane perfectly. That way there'll be no deflection in the, in the stiffener. Now we're going to take the master relay plate and check it for fit. We may have to notch it out depending if we have a rib nutter installed back there. Okay, so now that you've notched it out, be sure to mount the hardware facing aft. This allows you to get the interior back on without having unsightly bumps. And then you're going to mount the battery rack to the honeycomb. Now here we've matched everything up and we want to fit it together. But before you do this, you want to test all the components one time before you start putting the battery weight back there. So this is what you've notched it out. You've mounted the relay on it. And now we want to go test fit everything in the back of the aircraft. And this way we'll make sure that we have a good mount to the airplane using Star Washer because that's going to be our negative load carrying. Now that we have everything mounted in the back of the aircraft, now we can start running the new battery cable. And this is going to run along the right-hand side of the fuselage. It's going to run under the spar. We're going to have to zip tie it to a bunch of stuff. And finally, it's going to exit out of the front of the airplane. Secure it well because this is going to be your main energizer cable for the entire aircraft. Use a larger cable than you think you need. And now we're ready for the actual battery install. And that's really easy to do. But before we do that, we want to make sure we have a drain out of the bottom of the aircraft for the clear tubing. Hook it all up so we don't want any corrosion in the back. And then here's the battery in the back all ready to go. Now that we have the battery installed in the aircraft and we can check it for electrical continuity and the relay working, it's time to think about the weight and balance. And here are all your typical weights. By the way, if it's a G35 you're putting in the back, it weighs set 27 pounds, not 22.5. And finally, here's a list of the figures that we used. We hope you found all this useful and informative. Thanks for watching, and have a great day flying your Grumman. And in addition, there's a little treat about 3 o'clock in the morning when I'm doing web work and other stuff. Here's my cat coming down, playing with a mouse and meowing and just having a good time with me in the wee hours of the night. So I thought I'd throw this into you as a little treat. Y'all please enjoy.